Hi, in this presentation I'm going to talk about the object model in Excel VBA. So when you think about an Excel application, you can think of it as a hierarchy of collections of objects which are manipulated by code. Each object um, can potentially contain collections of other objects and it may also have properties and methods. So we're going to illustrate all this using the index list box demo. So let's go over here and the first thing I'll done is do is run this for you so you can see how it works. So um, let's just run our macro here. Now what happens here is I can type a word uh, just do a few here whoops try to spell it right um, I don't know Okay, so I've got some words. Now down here, I'm going to enter a letter. Like let's say I would enter um, C. And what happens is it highlights the first entry that starts with that letter. So let's try W and let's try B. And you can see it's picking banana because it comes before berry. Okay, so that's what it does. And um, Actually, the code is kind of interesting. If we go over to Visual Basic, um, let's close this for now. Uh, what I've done here is made use of the indexing feature that applies to list boxes. So here we're um, adding a word. We is just using the add item uh, method that we've used all along, uh, where I read the word from the text box and um, add it to the list and my list box is called LST word and then uh, to find um, the entry that starts with a given letter I have the event that the text box called txt letter has changed okay so whenever there's a change in there I'm going to run this procedure and what I do is I get the length of the list of words that's in the list box, start with the index equals zero and word found to be false, that's Boolean. And my letter is whatever letter is in the text box. And then um, if the entry in the text box happens to be the null string, there is no letter, then I do nothing. Otherwise, what I do is um, I keep looking at the um, words in the list box. Now I'm going to start uh, with the index of zero because indexing in list boxes starts at zero. So um, my biggest index therefore, let's say there's five elements in the list box, they're numbered zero to four. So my biggest index with five elements would be four and that's why this minus one is here. I keep looking until I get to the end of the list or until the word is found. And of course, by stopping when the word is found, I get the first one instead of the last one. And um, what I do is look at the first character, which is the leftmost character taking a substring of length one off of this particular word, the one at position index in the list. And if I do find it, I set word found equals true and otherwise I keep going. And afterwards, if the word is found, I um, set this property called selected um, of that particular index to be true and that's what creates that blue line uh, highlighting it. And then once that's done I set up for the next entry by setting the focus to be that letter box and um, what that does is it means we're ready to type in there. We don't have to actually click in it and the position we're starting at is zero which means that the whole the letter that's currently in there is selected and that means if I just type another letter it replaces it and that triggers this event. Okay so that's what's happening. Um, let's go back to our form. 
So view the object, okay. And again, we're, we're going to think of the contents of, of an Excel application um, as a hierarchy of objects. So let's take a look here. A list box is an object and it contains other objects uh, such as the items. It also has properties um, such as its height, whether it's visible or not, um, its leftmost, the position of its leftmost, its left upper corner, and so on. Um, it has methods which do something such as add item and clear, and it also has events like um, the change event that, well, that was for the text box, but there are also list box events uh, for which there are built-in functions. Okay, now suppose you're trying to write a program like the one I just showed you, and you don't remember all the, or you don't know all the events, objects, and methods for an object you want to work with. So uh, let's say it's list box. Well, if we come over here, um, right here there's a handy gadget called the object browser. And you can access it right here on the um, menu bar. If I click it, then it opens the object browser. And I was recently looking for list box. So just type what you're looking for here, the name of the object, and push return. And um, here we have, within our project, our actual list box is called form index list box. Um, I mean, that's the name of our project. And then within the more general Microsoft Forms, there is an abstract list box. So right now we're looking at it. And you can see in the list here, um, it's distinguished things like methods, add item as a method with this particular little green icon. Properties have um, a little hand pointing to a box, so it's like the um, properties box over here. and Events have a little lightning bolt. Uh, so before drag over, change was one we used on a text box, uh, and so on. Okay, and what you can do here is you can scroll through and you can see all the possible events, all of the um, properties, and all of the methods, the actions that you can do. Okay. Now, if I click on to my um, actual project, then what it's done here is um, showing me the members of this project. And there are some general ones, and then there are some ones I've defined, like, for example, um, ch the event of changing the uh, Letterbox is an action that I'm using and that I've written some code for. So this is a nice way to see what's available. Okay, here's my button that I wrote. Um, and so on. Here's my list box, list word. Okay. So that shows you the object browser. Let's close it up. So the, the point is that I think the, the general one is, is the most useful one, or at least the one I, I've used the most. And it um, lets you figure out exactly what you can do with each type of object. So here on the slides now, I, I go through showing you where the icon is, um, finding different properties, uh, methods, and events. Um, and here's a picture of the Mac version, which is in a little different place. So it's under the view menu, but basically it has the same functionality that we find on the Windows version. So when you're working in Excel, you're using a dot to navigate down the object hierarchy. Uh, for example, if I have a list box called list word in my user form called form index list box, and my workbook is called index list box, then um, how many of those designators I have to use to actually refer to my object depends on the state the program's in when the code is running. So if I happen to know that the user form will be active when the code is running, then I can just refer to the list box by its name list word as we've been doing. If I don't know that the um, 
form will be active, but I know the workbook will be active, then I can refer to it by prefixing the form name, then the dot, then the name of the list box. Um, otherwise, the other thing I could do would be to use the activate method for the form to make sure it's active before I start referring to its sub-objects in the code. Now, in general, there's a complete um, explicit name for each object that starts with the application and goes down the list. Um, again, you don't have to use a complete name if you know the containing object will be active. So um, the top level is, is called the application. If you're inside Excel, then Excel. Uh, and again, the, naming something with the whole giant string of, you know, the application, the name of the workbook, the name of the uh, form, etc., etc., only is necessary if you're not sure that the form will be active when your code is running. Now, if you're familiar with object-oriented programming, um, this looks a lot like object-oriented programming, but you will find certain things are, don't operate in a standard way. For example, inheritance. Um, if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. But if you do, don't expect it to work the way you're used to. So, okay, here's an example where um, I'm referring to my, uh, I'm using the, the add item uh, method to add a word to list word. And if I don't know that um, the form is active, I could do it this way. If I do know, I can omit this particular part of the complete designation. Whenever you refer to anything in Excel, you're implicitly using the object hierarchy, although lots of times we omit the top level objects. And, it, and once again, you can use activate methods to obviate the need for doing that. Um, notice that in some cases, dots are moving us down the hierarchy. So the form contains the word, the list box list word. But this final dot can refer to a, a method, as we're doing here, um, or to a property. Now, if you're writing code, <coughs> excuse me, and write um, the name of an object followed by a dot, VBA will typically show you all the things you could have following the dot um, legally within your code. So that can be very helpful and um, keep you from having to go to the object browser too much. Uh, you can also use the immediate window or use the F2 key to bring up the object model, uh, the object browser immediately. Okay, so that just gives you some more background on uh, what we've been doing all along with methods, um, events, and properties. But it shows you how to go to one source and find the uh, definitions and the list of the possibilities, uh, which can be, again, really helpful if you want to write a program that um, does something a little more sophisticated like the one I showed you with the index list box. Okay.